Hi, I'm Dan from Otchwaker Appliance Repairs. We're going to be talking about the model number system that Fisher & Paykel uses for their top load smart drive washing machines. It actually has got all the information about the size and controller level um, and series of the washing machine and the model number. There has been a few changes in their format over the years. So we're just going to go through, we're going to go briefly through the first 20 odd years and then concentrate more on the, uh, the last 20 years. Um, and so just to, you'll be able to look at a model number and from that to tell right away what kind of washing machine we're looking at. Right, I have got some notes here. Um, so excuse me having a look at the notes. Um, in saying that, most of this is from, half of this is from memory, half of this is from, from manuals and stuff. So if there's any mistakes or anything like that, then um, don't sue me. Um, if you're in a different country, there will be slight differences. So the examples I put up of what we see here in New Zealand and in Australia, there are some times where certain letters will be changed to reflect different things or slight changes um, and extra letters on for some countries. But overall, the format is going to be the same. So Fisher & Paykel started off in New Zealand back in the 1930s. Um, but before my time, and they started off importing appliances and then started making them under license um, and then started making their own machines a bit after that. So uh, the, I mean, the th oldest machine I know was what they called the old 380, which is a timer controlled washing machine. Um, I used to love watching it as a kid, watching it agitate away, it sprayed water through the top and uh, that was amazing for me, didn't know where it was going to lead and lead into a career for me. Um, but they had several brands, so they brought out other companies um, and they had the license to use different brands here in New Zealand. So they had uh, Frigidaire, Calvinator, Shacklock, and so what we saw with some of the earlier washing machines is that they would be the same machine and then use that name, much the same as nowadays. Uh, for a little while they used to have Alba and then now you've got the Fisher & Paykel and the Hire, uh, which are two separate brands but both are now I Hire, etc. So Fish and Piper were making those. Now, what happened was in the 1980s, in 1985, um, they decided to come out, well, they redesigned a better washing machine. So the old washing machines of the gearbox, you got very limited action on the agitate. So the story that I've heard is that there was a lady who studied all the different agitate profiles, how fast, how big is should sweep should the agitator have, all that kind of thing, and came up with the optimum settings for different types of fabrics and apparently her name was Annie, so they called the washing machine the Gentle Annie. Uh, it was also called the ECS, uh, which stood for Electrically Commutated System, because it was the first time where the motor was actually electrically commutated, as in they had the electronics to switch the motor and rather than just having a commutator of brushes, and so they could very accurately control the motor. Now, it was nothing like the smart drive motor. Um, it had a lot more windings. I think it was three phase, but there were multiple windings in each phase. The plug to it was this great big... Um, probably about 9 by 3 pin plug, not all of them were populated. Um, and so, but it was the, the grandfather of what we know now as a smart drive. So we started off with... Gentle Annie ECS. And the model number system they started for those, so I believe that they were all 5kg and they weren't any bigger. So they had... Um, GW... MW, and they started off with a 50. Uh, we're going to talk about the letters in a minute when we get on the smart drives. Then they had a 51 and a 52. And so, even back when I was an apprentice, it's not so much nowadays, but back 15 years ago, people used to say, Oh, I've got a gentle Annie. Um, and sometimes they'd have an actual gentle Annie. Uh, sometimes they would have just a smart drive, but it was kind of a big new thing and Fisher and & Paykel was really innovative and, and so everyone just called them gentle annies even though they, um, they lasted from, it would be from 85 to 91. To 91. So that was the gentle annie. Now, after that, they developed on how can we expand on this and they developed the smart drive motor and then the smart drive spline system, which I think there was a similar system in the gentle annie. I can't remember, I didn't work on them a whole lot. Uh, the last one of those I saw was probably about four years ago. Had someone contact me from down the sounds who still had one going. And I was like, no, we can't. Unfortunately, we don't get parts of those for a very long time. Um, yeah, so they then brought out the Smart Drive, which was a total redesign again. Uh, to, very similar to what we know now. Um, but the first Smart Drive was the Phase 1. Now, I'm going to not talk too much about the details of the, the differences in the components and stuff, because they were just turn this into a multi-hour multi -hour lecture. We're just going to talk about the model number format.
for, for now. So we had the smart drive, and so they started off with um, a few models here. So they had the letters before, so we had three stages on the letters. And then we added another number on, we had the 50, 51, 52. So we'd have like the 500, 600, and 700. So these numbers here were just the uh, the size in kg. So that was a you know the, the capacity rating of the machine. So that was a five kg, six kg, and seven kg. And then the letters here. I'm assuming the W stood for washer. The letters here stood for the level of the display. So you had the the LW just had um, only a couple of cycles you could choose from. Very basic choices on the water level and the water temperature. MW had still had the basic water level water temperature options, but more cycle options. And the GW had a lot more options. I um, can't remember if they had favorite cycle back then. And they had more options on the more cycles and then more options for water level. You could choose intermediate water levels and you could choose uh, intermediate water temperatures. How I used to remember them was I'd think of this one G for good, M for medium, and L for low. And so these were from 91 to 93. Now, Fish and Pike was stuck to this format for quite a long time. Uh, this here was called the Phase 1. First one they had. Not a whole lot of those were made in that time compared to the Phase 2 and the ones that came after. So if you see any of those, but again, we can't get parts of them. They're very old. Everything I'm talking about now, up until the 2000s, can't really get parts of them. So unless you've got a stock of second-hand parts, you're dealing with very old machines. Right, um, now there were some slight differences in that for some of the LW models, they would throw in, they would change the number around. So you might get like LW050, instead of 500, um, and MW060, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm not sure why, I don't know, there probably would be some difference. Uh, but Fisher and Pike didn't want to make things too simple, so they sometimes change the letters around. So if you see it in a different format of the numbers around, sorry, it'll be Y. Now, the next one to come out was the Phase 2 Smart Drive. I'm just going to use a GW, a 5KG, as a default going through. So we'd have GW501. Um, and once again, you'd have uh, MW501, MW601, MW701. So we had the three sizes, and we had the three levels of display. Now these were the cold machine, there were so many of them, even um, mid-2000s, when I was working on them, we still saw a lot of these. So these are from 1993 to 1995. So it was when they went to the Phase 3 that they realised that they didn't want to just add another number on. So the Phase 3 was when they skipped a number. Once again we had three different display levels, once again we had three different sizes, and once again they would swap the numbers around, so you could have a, an MW uh, 053, um, which would be the, the lower level, um, medium level display on a 5.5 kg machine. And that was from 95 through to 96. So now we're kind of lined up the numbering here and we're starting to get in step. Um, Fish and Pike will decide to change things again. So I believe, again, I've been told that what happened here was they expanded into Asia and they were going to launch the next model into Asia and they wanted to have a Lucky, they wanted to have a lucky number, um, or they wanted to avoid a number or something like that. So what they decided to do is the phase four, they were going to call it an eight, for the sake of calling it that. So they called it a series eight. And that way they could then make the model number be something like GW508. Apparently all to get the, the number eight. Um, so yeah, everything's now <laughs> out of... Out of step again from what you'd expect. Um, and again, they still had the MW and LW. So we still had MW, LW, and we still had the, the sizes. Uh, and this was from 96 to 98, another two year. Right. Um, so the next one that came out, and we're starting to get closer to machines that you're going to see nowadays, is the Phase 5 and series eight, sorry, series nine. So we've now just, just increased each one incrementally, incrementally by one. Um, 
Yeah. So we had this GW 509, 609, 709. Uh, but then they did something else, so they brought out what they called the intuitive washer. So this was then an IW. Um, and I think it was only the larger... Yeah, no, apparently they did the model capacities. So it would be 509, 609, 709. So the IW stood for intuitive, uh, intuitive eco. So this is the washing machine that has an LCD display. And it has a diverter valve in the drain pump so it can recirculate water like that old 380 um, timer washing machine used to do, chugging away, spraying water around. Um, and so they had the intuitive, was basically another level as well as the GW, MW, and LW. Now, I believe in the US, what they did is they, instead of calling it the 5, 6, 7 kg, because around here they were actually starting to expand it out somewhere around here, they started calling it 5.5, 6.5, 7.5 kg. Um, I'm assuming they've just increased the dimensions of the bowl slightly, the cabinet size didn't change. But they've changed the way it washes a bit, increased things a bit, and they're calling an extra half kg. So I believe over in the in the US, um, it was called IWC09, um, IWM09, and IWL09. So these letters here being compact, medium, large. And you still see that nowadays moulded on the back of the plastic top control housing, control top top deck of the washing machine. It'll have medium, compact, or large, um, and so that determines the actual width of the washing machine. Um, now there was a slight change here, which they made. They called it still series five. Um, sorry, the phase five series ten. So for the phase five series ten. Um, these, as far as what I've seen, were only in the IW. So it wasn't here, it was IW, you know, let's say, well, we usually saw the larger ones, 710. Um, so it was only the intuitive machines. Now there was a controller change. Up to here, every controller, they changed the plastic colour of the coating of the control board, uh, and they changed the part number, but every series, the motor controller was the same, and then the different displays had a different level of uh, options on it. With the between the series nine and series ten, they brought out a new controller. It used to be a uh, ended in five twenty, uh, probably four two six five two zero. Then it changed to a um, fourteen seven six four seven six four was on the end. Uh, but then that controller was backwards compatible. So the seven six four, I think it's seven six four. I'll put up the number. It's been so long since I've dealt with one. Um, it's, it, would, it was made for the IWs, but could also replace these other controllers here. So now, we've, rather than skipping numbers, we've also gone for another series while keeping it at the same phase. And we will still see some of these washing machines around now. We haven't been able to get the control boards for them, the motor controllers, for quite a long time. Um, most of the other parts are still very similar, things like agitators, suspension rods, all that sort of stuff. They're still the same up to recent models, except for the last, latest ones. Um, We'll talk about that in a minute. And so um, there's still a lot of cross compatibility across some parts. But you want to be careful because we can't get those control modules. Also, the way they control the pump, um, there's a whole lot of interesting stuff they've done with the electronics on all of these. Um, the IW series was the first ones where they went air cooled. And another thing was what they did is they controlled the pump, which is a 240 volt AC pump here in New Zealand. It's probably 100, it'll be 115 volts, um, 60 hertz in the US. But here in New Zealand, what they did is they, and it'd be the same in the US, but different voltages, they took the DC that they'd regulated out to run the motor, and they then switched that to the pump, rather than actually switching, just switching a triac on to turn on AC, they were having two um, transistors or triacs and controlling a DC, wouldn't be a triac, uh, they were making their own AC out of a DC. And the reason for that was that they could switch at a higher frequency at 60 hertz, get the water out faster, but then when it started cavitating it made a lot more noise. So they get the water out faster and then as soon as the pump hit about zero mils and started cavitating, they slowed the pump down. However, because of that, if that pump control circuit is, is with the old controllers, it gets faulty and it doesn't switch the pump fast enough and then the pump will just turn very slowly or just sit there humming and then the pump will overheat. So we have a lot of problems with those controllers, you've got to be very careful spending any money on one of these machines. Right, and so then we got on to the phase six, 
And so these are machines you'll see around much more frequently now. Um, we had the Series 11, and so there were quite a few changes as we had big changes here going from water-cooled to air-cooled control boards. We had big changes here. Um, well, actually, no, the first Series 11, they weren't that big of changes. They added a little lock. They redesigned the outside of it. Uh, they redesigned the motor, uh, still use the same RPS, still use the same pump. Uh, redesigned the cabinet design, so it's got the, you can see having this flat square lids that you can see up to here. In the Series 11, you have the lid that curves down a little bit, a bit more of a curved design. Uh, I should put some dates in here, shouldn't I? So this was from 1998 to 2001. And that's for both of those there. So the Series 11. Now, we basically kept the same format we had here. So we had IW, or was it, we had GW511, etc. And then we'd have IW611, um, 711. We didn't see many 511s. I don't know if they actually made that model. Uh, one thing that did change here, though, is that they got rid of the LW model. So we had GW, MW, and IW. So the LW model was really limited in options, and they just took that away. So the MW, you didn't have one wash cycle option, you had a few more. Um, and so you had a few more options there. In keeping with the Series 9 and 10, they then brought out a Series 12, which is still part of Phase 6. Yeah, so these are representative model numbers. MW512, I don't know if there were, there probably were some MW6kg, I don't know about 7kg. Again, they probably made these other models, but then it depends on what they pushed in sales and that kind of stuff. So the basic model, uh, we definitely saw lots of GW and MW512s. Uh, now, when these Series 12 first came out, they were very similar to the Series 11. Again, we had a control board change partway through. Um, the Partway through the Series 12, however, they redesigned the water valves. Um, so... The other thing here, the other change here was the RPS, sorry, they did change the RPS from the Series 9 to Series 11. Change of RPS um, to the semi-sealed type, because we've had problems with corroding for a long time in here. So they finally tried to seal that up. Uh, so Series 12, they changed to the, bl the blue chassis water valves, which are combined in together. So you still get some Series 12, which have got the white water valves on. I think electrically they're exactly the same as far as the controller sees it. Uh, it's just the fact they got rid of that mixing chamber with the thermistor sensor, which is a point of possible leaks. They made it all into one valve, and then you can have the thermistor still on there, less likely to leak. Um, then means if one valve fails, you've got to replace the two of them together. So it's, it's got, you know, got drawbacks there. It's simpler to replace, but, you know, it's, it costs more to do the two of them. Um, and still keeping the in intuitive. And then 2005 to 2011. So we still see a lot of these washing machines around. They're still quite good washing machines. Um, they've done other things along the way. So they've added lid locks in here. They've taken out the outer balance switch. Um, so that there's one less thing to corrode. As I said, they sealed up the RPS. Still got corrosion on the plugs. Uh, but then we had a improvement where they now got a wiring harness all attached in. I need to make a video on RPSs and talk about that. Um, so that eliminates that point of point of uh, leaks. So this is again, so this is still phase 12. Now with the multiple controllers changing here and the controllers changing here and the water valves different, uh, there's two different types of RPSs. Uh, one can work with either controller um, to a certain extent, the other one can't. You've got to get the right RPS the right controller. So it's, this is where it got really important to look at product codes. Now that's something else which Fisher or I, Pikeway had started doing, I'm not sure, I think it was around about here, which was where they brought in product codes. And what a product code number is, is it's five digits and a letter. And so what happens is when they make a change, like here where they change from one type of water valve to the other, they can still keep the same marketing name, it's still an MW512, but they can change the product code. So every little change, they change the product code. So when you're looking at a parts manual, you look for the product code of the right parts, um, and most of the parts will be the same. Like as I said, the agitators have been cross-compatible all the way back to at least the 501s, I'm assuming prior. Uh, the suspension rods on the MW machines have been cross-compatible all the way back. If you've got a 501, you can fit the modern suspension from a, a 512 or a 513 um, to it. Uh, the intuitive washers were a little bit 
Oh no, Intruder Washer still uses the same suspension as well. Uh, it was the the Equus Smart where things changed. So the controller changed a lot. You got to kind of check. Now the other thing they did do is they didn't have one controller like here. You end up with one controller that did everything. Uh, between the different markets, the different motors, they had some motors which were aluminium windings they started introducing around about here. Uh, as I said, different RPSs. You can't just put one controller in and expect everything to work. You can run into problems if you try and doing that. Um, now things start really kind of falling apart. I'm not sure if Fisher & Paykel had another phase as such. Um, from what I can tell, the next model out was a phase 9. I don't believe there was a phase 7 or 8. Right, so this one here, the model numbers, for some models they kept the same system. So you still had an MW513. But then for the other models, uh, everything changed and we went to a whole new model format for a little while. Uh, what I might do is I'm just going to wipe this off because this is again, we we talked about up to about here, we're getting to machines which are too old to really worry about. I'm just going to wipe this off and we'll start again and start talking about some of the more newer model systems. Okay, we are back again. So I've kind of put an example model number here, GW612, and then we have the IW with the LCD intuitive eco display, we have the GW with more options, MW with less options, because remember that used to be the medium and then we had a low. The LW, but that's gone away. We had three display options, we had three washer sizes. Now, what happened with the phase nine? So, here we'd have series 12, phase nine, or it would be series 11, uh, sorry, phase, phase six, sorry. Phase six. So, what happened with the phase nine is they did uh, just include, increase it to series 13. So, they did increase it to series 13, but they kind of stopped using this model number series for half of them. So we did still have a um, MW513, and that was still basically just more modern electronics. The changes here include, again, changes to the electronic control board. They're now the yellow control board. Uh, they were able to eliminate the rotor position sensor. So the electronics have got fancy enough to be able to sense where the motor is from the current of the motor as it's controlling the motor and doesn't need the RPS. So it's, um, which is quite hard to do at low RPM, which is why it's taken them so long to do it. So they, on the, the 11s and 12s, they've got a new RPS that was sealed in with the harness still corroding where it connected. They brought out a kit for that with a sealed in harness. They were able to eliminate that entirely. So we've now eliminated the out of balance switch, which used to corrode. We've eliminated the RPS that used to corrode. We've eliminated the lid read switch um, in the series 11 and replace it with a lid lock, which is much more reliable than the old switches used to be. So they've done, there's been big improvements um, along the way. The water valves are still backwards compatible, the motors were different, uh, suspension rods, agitator, all that sort of stuff's the same, and the sizing is the same. Now for the non-MW machines, um, I believe there's a 513 and a 613, but for anything larger than that, they brought out new model number features. Um, so we're talking about 2011 onwards here. Um, so what they did is, I'll write out an example model. WA55 T56G or GW. So now how WA being washer, now I believe it stands for washer agitate, because um, the front loader washing machines were WH. Uh, there was a WH, I think 60, WH60F60. Um, so I don't know if it was the H or the, the F meaning front loader. So, but I believe that this here means washer or washer agitate. So this here was the KG. So you'd have a WA55, uh, WA65, WA60. So some, they still had the three different sizes, compact, medium and large. But in the same way that they increased the 5, 6, and 7 kg up to uh, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, there was a change on some of these machines which included um, increasing the bowl size a bit to try and squeeze a bit more room in. I'm not sure if that was this model or the model after. But there's a bit of a change in the, the kg rating. Um, the T, again, I think that means top loader. Because some of the models had an F in there instead. And then the 56 here was 
the width of the tub in centimetres. So you had a 56, a, I think it's a 60 and a 65 centimetre uh, for the three sizes. Again, compact, medium and large is written on the back of the moulding. And then the G on the end is for the GW display. So this series of model numbers here, so it's kind of similar to this number here. Um, instead of having the number on the front, we've got kg and centimetres because those are starting to become uncoupled a little bit. And um, still got the G on there. Then Fisher and Pike will decide to change things again. Now, I mentioned a little bit about marketing names of the product codes. What they did is they then went fully into names um, as well as the, the product codes. So everything was still smart drive related. So we have a whole series of different names. We have Quick Smart, we have Wash Smart, we have the Wash Smart Eco, we have the Fabric Smart, and we have the Clean Smart. Now I have to confess I've gone and sat down and had to read through the manual to um, understand which was which here, because in general most technicians aren't going to care about these names. Um, because also some of the front loaders are using the same names for the different, but basically it's increasing levels of, of options as we go along. So the num model number system also changed. So um, it went to a couple of letters plus four numbers, plus another couple of things after that. So for example, we have the WA 7060M2. So it's kind of changed from here and there, I've lost that letter in between. Um, so this here means washer, and this here means agitate. Now the other option is, could be a WT, uh, sorry, WL, for low profile. So that's what they call the pulsator. WL means it's got a low profile pulsator. Uh, next we have kg and centimeters. And then here is our display level. It's the same as we had the IW, GW, MW. Uh, we have M, which is our basic. So it has got a um, LED clock, which is showing your time, uh, but it has no dial on it. Now, all of these machines here, um, they're all, I'm guessing these are series 14 now. I haven't seen a direct mention of it. Um, or were they calling it phase 10 or series 10? I'm not sure. I should check into that. Um, these have all got a touch sensitive pad. So all the way out to here, we had little micro switches underneath a, a flexible membrane. These are all touch sensitive. And again, the whole top deck has been redesigned. The, um, the agitators have been redesigned. The machine had quite a few changes. And part of those changes were increasing, I think this is where I was talking about the increasing of the bowl diameter to fit into the same chassis. Now uh, that's where that came about. I uh, think, and by mining standard or here, but it definitely have it here, where they're squeezing a, you know, what should be, what used to be a 6.5 kg and 60 centimetres is now a 7 kg. And way back in the earlier models, it was a 6 kg, so it got another kg out of the same physical space, uh, just in the squeezing the bowl out a bit. When they do that, it's because they've got better suspension and the way the motor controls it, um, means that they're less likely to bang around going out of balance. So we have the NW there, we have the G, which is more options. Mostly this is, I believe, in the cycle um, cycle options, how many cycles you've got to choose for. This one's only got like four. This one's got six, I think. Um, and then also will be with your water levels and that kind of thing as well. The E is for eco display. And this is recirculation. So it's still got an agitator. It'll be WA7060E. Uh, um, so this is very much like the intuitive ecos we had, where we had the drain pump running through a diverter valve recirculating. So it's recirculating that way. Um, the L low profile will be the one where they switch, I think, to the other pump. Although I don't know whether they combine the L profile with the standard pump or not. Um, and then finally you've got the P, which is the premium, which has then got a dial. So you've got a big rotary dial on top to select the cycles. Um, and it also has, I believe this is the one that has... Um, the um, new dispense, the dis, you know, softened dispensers and stuff at the front. Okay, so that's, and then the two here is just like a variant number. So that's the whole model number system there. Um, 
Now, how that ties into these models here, I should have written this a little bit lower down. So this one here, the quick smart, is going to be the basic M model. So it's going to be an M1, M2, something like that. Um, basically the equivalent of an MW512 or 513. Um, this one here is a G model. Now this here has got the Eco, so this will have the Eco display. It's got a few different options to do with the Eco. And so it's got recirculation. And that comes with obviously the more options of the, similar to the GW display. Um, Fabric Smart here is premium. Um, and so, as you know, this has got the normal agitator. Yeah, normal agitator, but has got recirculation. I'm going to put a question mark there because I'm not sure if all the Fabric Smarts have recirculation, but I'm pretty sure they do, similar to the Wash Smart Eco. Um, I'm not sure what are the differences between Fabric Smart and Wash Smart Eco. And then the Clean Smart, this is kind of similar to the Aqua Smart. So, this is we have the, uh, the L for the low profile. Um, so it's going to be premium profile pulsator and then it's got the smart pump. So this is basically the, the aqua smart option here. And so in this kind of similar vein we did have some front loaders using the similar model numbers. Uh, so, so front loaders for example when we had this model system here the front loaders were, so it would be example WH60F60, um, and so the H is different, I'm assuming, I don't know if the H or the A in the F instead of a T, I believe that means top loader and front loader, I'm not sure why the H changes. They were all 60 kg, but they had, six, sorry, 60 centimeter, but they had 60, 70, 6, 7 and 8 kg washers. Uh, and then when we had this four digit in the middle without the letter, um, an equivalent model number of that would be WH7560 P1, so that's a 60 centimeter, 7.5 kg. Um, I believe there's only P and J, so I'm not sure there is to be different display options. And they had a 7.5 and an 8.5, and um, all, all again all in a 60 centimeter casing there. Um, so that's the similar model number series they started using. Now, Fish and Paykel have never built their own front loaders. Uh, now you could argue now the fact that they made owned by hire is a little bit different. They have sold front loaders over the years. Um, back a long time ago, I think probably early 2000s, they imported Bosch machines, rebadged them. So you see a lot of that in the industry where if brand A will take machines from brand B, we'll get a contract, make us X thousands of machines and we'll sell them with our name on them. Uh, in about the time like this here, I believe this is basically a Beko, or it's come from a Beko similar factory from Europe. Um, although in saying that, this here was about the time when they brought out Alba, which was a European brand. So there might have been some Alba-based factories which are building the same machine as Beko. Um, often you'll get that with a factory to set up the same, building the same kind of machine. But that's what it looks to me inside all the like a Beko from that area. And then these machines here are hires. And again, hire owns Fish and Paykel. Uh, you will get the hire and the Fish and Paykel machine side by side with different model numbers. Um, and you know, different control panels, but inside virtually the same machine. Because a lot of these changes here, the, the changes with the agitator profile, uh, some of the changes with suspension rods and changes with pumps, but a lot of this, and electronics will be different, but everything else on the machine is virtually the same. So there's a lot of that times where they just, you're just paying for more options than display, but they don't want to spend too much more money on making a whole new machine, so they keep as much similar as they can, which is good for parts compatibility too, not having to carry a whole ton of parts. Right. Hopefully that's all coming up okay on the screen. I might take a photo of that and put a high quality photo. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're not in New Zealand, you'll probably have a, a different series if you're not in New Zealand or Australia. Um, let me know. If you go out in the shops right now, in 2024, there's a new model out. It looks to me like it's again, what we, had a, we had quite a change from the 13s to, well these machines here to here, we went with touch pads. It's changed again quite a lot. The motor's changed. Um, the design to me looks like halfway between a fish and pike and a hire. I'm really interested in actually getting one apart. Um, of course, we'll have to wait a little bit for them to start breaking down outside of warranty for us to get our hands on them. Um, and, but yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what's inside, what's different, what's the same, and see what they've done with the model numbers too. So at some point in the future, I might have to do an updated video for the latest models, but I'm hoping they've kept things roughly the same to this here, but we'll, we'll find out. Got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I do try and check every couple of days. If something more than that, you can flick me an email. Um, just email youtube at motrepairs.co.nz. Uh, please don't call us up. We have 
busy enough office as it is. Alright, thanks for watching.